Welcome to this new video and today we're going to be looking at a touch activated track control system. Now for my purposes I use DCC using the DCC++ system but this system could be adapted for a standard analog control if you wanted to. Now the panel that you see in the picture uh, is based on a prototype that I built. So this is the prototype and as you can see on the left hand side it uses a 5 inch uh, touch screen um, with a couple of rotary encoders. This does all the loco control that's not part of uh, this video today. On the right hand side is another uh, touch screen. This uh, controls auxiliary things such as sound and animations on the layout. Again that's not part of this tutorial. What we're going to be looking at today is this system. So this is the uh, track control system and basically this was my prototype. Uh, I have a traverser here so I used um, a set of near pixels. I've then marked out the track diagram using a bit of white tape, uh, mounted some near pixels underneath and then on the top here are some GT911 capacitive touch screens and I used two of them on my prototype so the idea was that I could touch on top of the uh, near pixel and that would change the track direction so we'll just zoom in a little bit to get a better view of what we're doing so zooming in a little bit quicker I'm sorry the picture isn't the greatest um, the reason this was a prototype and I learned from this is you might be able to see some lines here this is where I'd stuck the capacitive touch screen on top of some smoked acrylic. The near pixels are mounted on the back of the acrylic. The problem was that this became a fixed track plan and I actually like building modular layouts so I can change things around. And I discovered to my cost that despite the advert saying that this tape was easily removable, it wasn't and it meant that I was absolutely stuck and couldn't uh, change the track plan once it was all stuck together. So as this was a prototype I then decided that I would rebuild the system because there were a few errors that I'd made. The first thing I'd put the loco control on the left and I'm right-handed and believe me I built a left-handed controller. If you want a left-handed controller that's the way to do it. If you want a right-handed controller, you need this on the right-hand side because your dominant hand is better controlling the fine uh, movements of loco speed control while your left hand can just press on top of the buttons. The lessons you learn when you build these things. So what I wanted to do was to be able to build a modular system. So I'm just going to explain what that is all about. So this is uh, a modular railway. Um, I like to build uh, layouts for exhibitions and I've always built modular layouts and the idea with a modular layout is that I can take all or some of the layout. This has advantages for me because unlike some of my American cousins who seem to have basements that are huge and you can build the layout the size of a planet I have to work in a very small garage and I'm limited in space so by building modules I can put some of the layout out at any one time so typical modular layout I've just based this on three modules very simple modules and the idea is that these modules can be changed to any order that I want uh, this means that not only can I alter my layout at any point, um, but it means that if I go to an exhibition, they might want it in a different way. Uh, I've built corner sections in the past for layouts so they can make them to different shapes. Or, as in this version here, the layout might need to be smaller. Now, great as modular layouts are, of course, the problem comes with DCC. Um, if you're used to using these dreaded things where you've got a controller like a pocket calculator and you're trying to remember all the turnout or point numbers if you can imagine if I set it up like this I can do a logical system one two three four five six seven then of course I change the modules around and all the numbers change 
Now I am not in the mood for reprogramming the layout every time I operate it. And the other thing is I like to have other operators run the layout while I'm away, usually having something to eat or having a look around the exhibition. And one of the things I found was with standard DCC control, no operator could operate my layout because they just couldn't memorize all the numbers, especially when I jumbled them up. So the whole point of this touchscreen controller was that nowhere would anyone have to type in a number. But at the same time, with the modules, I wanted to be able to build individual control modules for each board module so that I could swap the modules round in my main control box and just stick them together as I wanted. So that is the uh, aim of what I'm trying to build. So let's just have a little look at the construction system just so you can see how I've put this together. So the top layer is a GT911 touchscreen. Now what I've actually done on mine is I've made a little plastic card fascia that goes over here. These GT911 touchscreens, some of them uh, come with a self-adhesive tape. Some, you, know, you can just stick them down yourself. But as I found, if you ever want to lift the thing up to change the track plan, it is a real pain. That said, you can actually put the tape for the track plan on top of the touchscreen if you want, and it doesn't seem to cause any problems at all. But I wanted to make my life difficult for myself, and I wanted the track plan stuck underneath. So the way I've built mine is a touch screen. This is mounted on top of some smoked acrylic. I'm using smoked acrylic because someone had given me a load of the stuff. So it's just I've got it. It's free and it's nice to use. I then have a piece of plywood, which is this colored piece here. And on top of this, I've mounted some near pixels. Then I've got a spacer that comes in and then a piece of Vera board with an ESP32 mounted underneath. And then, of course, the cable comes down from the touch screen and from the near pixels. They all go into the ESP32. Now, because I wanted this to be modular, uh, I wanted the absolute minimum amount of wires. And that's why I used an ESP32, because I'm actually using ESP now, which is a sort of mini Wi-Fi system specifically for the ESP32 and it is ideal for sending small messages between different ESP modules. So I'm almost built my own sort of DCC commands that are being sent back to my main controller. Uh, so again that's the main reason for the ESP32 because it meant all I required was 5 volts in that powered the ESP32, the near pixels, and the touch screen. So that is my construction. Now, on the Digital Town website, there'll be a link under the video to this. I've done a write up of the whole construction, the problems that I came through, and some alternatives because I use this system. I've seen other systems that I would have probably used if I didn't have these materials, but this is what I've used. So this is an overview of what's actually going on here. So I have my main loco controller. That was that five inch touchscreen uh, that's attached to an Arduino Dew and that connects to my DCC++ system via serial communication. Very simple. I then have the auxiliary controller and on this system again it uses an ESP32 this communicates to the Arduino Dew, which in turn passes information onto the DCC++ system. The reason for that is obviously I don't want both systems sending information at exactly the same time, otherwise I'm going to make a, make a right mess up of the information being received. So basically it passes information to the Arduino Dew, which passes it on. Uh, the reason I use the Arduino Dew is I'd already built the system, it works extremely well, and why change something if it's not broken? Uh, the ESP32 is used here because this is my scenic effects. So 
the Arduino Jew is passing to DCC++ information to do with locos and track control. The um, scenic effect, so if I want lights to go on and off in buildings, uh, on my last layout I used to send that again as an accessory command. I don't do that anymore. What I'm actually doing is using ESP now again. So what it is actually doing is sending the ESP now command to the different layout modules and each one has an ESP32 receiving its individual commands. Um, if you want more information on that maybe I'll do a video later. So what we're looking at today is I've got for each layout module I've got a touch screen, set of near pixels, um, ESP32 that's sending information via Wi-Fi using ESP now to the auxiliary controller that sends it to the loco controller sends it to DCC++ sounds a little bit complicated but actually in practice it's all pretty simple anyway let's have a quick look at the video of the unit actually working I apologize that it's not the best of videos and you might notice that I'm uh, missing some of the buttons that's because I'm trying to operate a phone while press the buttons and it's pretty weird to do anyway take a look Well, I hope that gave you a bit of an idea of how it works. This is the unit without the uh, LEDs on and actually the touch screen isn't fitted at this point. This was just part of it as I was building. So as you can see, there's a piece of wood mounted on the back that's painted black. The near pixels are stuck on top. They're just those um, the cheap strip ones with the self adhesive backs. I've cut them into bits and as you can see, I've soldered wires round to join them all together. The um, white lines, you know, it's just, I think it's pinstriping line off a car or something like that. And then this fascia here is where the touch screen is going to mount on front of this. Let's take a look at the back now. So the back of this is pretty simple. Again, this is during construction, but just to give you an idea how it works, you've got the ESP32. I mount it on a header just to make it easier. I've got a couple of headers here. This is the uh, connector for the touch screen. These are the three wires that are going out to the near pixels. And then I've got two connectors here. One of them, they're both five volts. They're actually connected to each other and to the ESP32. So basically there is one that will be uh, power in and one that can be used as power out to daisy chain it onto the next module. And it's basically as simple as that. Uh, just looking here, yeah, here we go. So this is the unit once I'd finished it. Uh, you'll see the red here. This is just uh, some of my wife's old nail varnish. And I use it just for one side of the connector just to show me which is the positive, just so that I know. The little bits of red on these screws is nail varnish again because it makes a great thread lock, thread locking system should you ever want to choose some use some who knew anyway that is the construction so now what we're going to do is have a look at the code so into the arduino ide it's a single page sketch so uh, not too long it's using obviously an esp32 dev module i'm using esp now a GT911 touchscreen and some NeoPixels. Now I've done a separate tutorial on using a GT911 touchscreen. That's on the Digital Town website. Again, you know there'll be a link under the video. Uh, on the website, I've got a full sort of page explaining how this whole project goes together because there's a whole set of other bits to do with this project that I'll be adding more tutorials to as time goes on. And then obviously I've got the near pixels again I've done a previous tutorial on how to use near pixels. 
Now, as we look down um, at the the GT not the GT nine one one touchscreen, these are the pins that I'm using. I always tend to list all the pins that I'm using. Uh, so other pins that I've got here um, is pin twenty seven, which is the near pixels. Bizarrely, for this project, very few pins used. It's uh, a very, very simple setup. Libraries that I'm using, obviously the wire library, um, that is for the touchscreen. I've got Wi-Fi and ESP now, which are the method for sending the ESP now data to the main auxiliary controller. So a few little bits looking down from the top. Obviously, I'm setting up the near pixels. I'm using the Adafruit near pixel library. I then have a set of what I call pixel touch points. Now, the way I did this, this is an array. If you think back to the touch screen, let's quickly bring this picture in. So. This main entrance, obviously, I've given a description here, so I know what I'm talking about. But 374666 is that position there. And then, obviously, 51163 is here. So, basically, I've created an array where I've listed all of the touch points. Then, on top of that, on my layout, when you click on this near pixel here, that uh, turnout or point on my layout is accessory number 10. And when it is turning left, it is sending a direction of zero. Now, if you look uh, when you're on this near pixel, which is this one here, it sends the other command to turn right which is a value of one for the direction. So what I've created here is an array of the touch points and the commands that should be sent. So uh, then I just set up the ESP now stuff. This is the structure. Uh, ESP now uh, uses a data structure. I'm only using two elements. One is the address. And one is the direction, which, of course, are these two items from this array. The broadcast address, one of the great things about ESP now is it's got quite a decent bit of security in, in that this is going to broadcast to this particular MAC address. Now, that MAC address happens to be the MAC address of the ESP32 that I've got in my auxiliary controller. But it has to actually know the MAC address to send the information which obviously it's not the greatest security in the world, but crumbs, it's a model railway and I doubt that international hackers are going to be trying to hack the system. So then we've got the GTT, GT911 touchscreen. It has an address of 5D. Uh, obviously, it's a hexadecimal address. Um, I've got the reset is on pin 15. The interrupts on pin 2. You can change them to whatever you want, but that's what I used it made it nice and easy to solder on the board. Um, let's now have a look through this. We've got some data for the uh, the way the touch screen works. This came from someone else. I didn't invent this. Guy's a genius. Uh, I wish I knew who I'd got it from and I just leave it alone because it works and there's various touch screen bits of information here including how the screen is set up. Again, that is in the separate uh, GT911 uh, tutorial if you're interested. Anyway, let's go down to the main system and see how this works. So we start off with um, serial, put serial on. This is just so I can debug script name. In fact, that's wrong. That should be a two, but still. Uh, I then begin the wire. Um, library and the first thing I do is run scan I2C now this is not required however I do it because firstly it's a very very uh, 
short piece of code and it just helped me when I was developing this just to make sure that the screen is actually attached and uh, looking through this just looking for that bit of code you will have probably seen this um, there we go it's a standard scan i2c just adapted to do it on the ESP32 and it's just this simple function that's looking for the various addresses obviously it's only going to find one but at least it showed me that everything was connected then it runs a function GT911 setup again this is going through a whole set of things that basically initialize the um, GT911 touchscreen where is it here we go so it's basically turning things on and off in the correct order to get the whole thing set up and ready to start uh, receiving data and it either gives you a message to say that you failed or that the whole screen is initialized successfully and it's ready to go so that's that bit of the script pretty easy then we have the Wi-Fi so we're turning the Wi-Fi uh, to the correct mode for what I'm trying to do again we then initialize ESP now and I also serial print this mod uh, ESP32's MAC address just so I can check that all's working and then this is where it gets a little bit weird for those of you who've just used Arduinos you tend to put everything in the main loop that needs things to happen ESP now um, when you send some information it will receive back some information and uh, you can decide what you're going to do when data is sent or received so I have a function here that I register that when I send data it says what I want to do and what basically what it does is it tells me the data was sent correctly it just prints that out in the serial monitor just so that I know um, I put a link on the Digital Town website to a brilliant tutorial on using ESP now uh, if people want me to do one I'll do one but I actually found the tutorial pretty simple to follow so uh, I'm not going to go into it in great depth this is just telling you uh, it's setting up the address that it's always going to um, send information to and then we start on the near pixels so it starts the near pixel library sets it all up sets an instance first thing I do is turn it off and then I've got a function called test lights basically all test lights does is it turns all the near pixels to a various set of colors and then it sets them all to blue now the reason it sets them all to blue is that when the module is turned on I don't know what direction any of the points or which position the turntable is in so I set everything to blue so that any operator would know that that turnout or point hasn't been operated yet so the system uh, so touch it first and set it then you'll know you go in the right direction and then the only thing that basically happens in this thing is it checks for touches on the touch screen so because there are no other buttons or switches that's all it does so let's take a look at this function so this is the main function check for touch screen and as we go through it's um, based on the GT911 tutorial I did so it's only looking for a single touch um, GT911 touch screens can receive up to five touches at the same time so you could actually do gestures on the touch screen this is a model railway we don't need that we only want to move one turn out at a time so it's only looking for a single touch so that basically puts the variables for me um, which is what all of this does it gives me an x position and a y position now just up here just for your information I use a debounce on this and I found that about 400 
uh, milliseconds is about right for this. The reason for having a debounce is obviously if you received every touch, you'd be constantly sending signals through. So I wanted enough time to put my finger on the button and take it off. And I found about 400 milliseconds was ideal. Make the value smaller. Obviously, it's going to be far more sensitive. Make it too high. And you know, if you made that a second, you might have touched two buttons and it won't pick the second button up. So I found sort of 0.4 of a second about right. So once it's got the X and the Y position, it goes down to a function called process touch point. It passes over that X and Y. So I've got my X and Y here. I've got um, 14 points in that array uh, pixel touch points that you saw earlier. And what it does is it works through that array and it checks if the X and the Y position are close to a touch point. Now, if I go back up to that array, obviously these are exact positions. But when you're talking about those exact positions, we're talking very, very exact positions, uh, far more exact than um, I would be able to pick up again with my finger. So what I have done, I'm just looking through the screen uh, for my functions again. So the way I work it is it's looking, say the X value, I've got the pixel, the center of the X position. It goes from minus 30 to plus 30 and it does the same with the Y position. So basically what I'm doing is I'm putting a 60 by 60 box around the touch position that I've got and as long as I touch within that area which is slightly bigger than the diameter of the near pixel all is going to work. So it works through the array and it is looking for uh, which near pixels have been touched and obviously as the different near pixels are touched it sets the near pixel colors. Now most of the time let's bring the photograph back up again. So if we looked at the first near pixel if it's touched in fact, so if you touch uh, in the right position it will set this one to green and this one to red. You'll notice here that this one sets two to, hang on, let's just move that out of the way. This sets two values to red and uh, one to green and that's because if you touch this near pixel here it sets this um, near pixel and this near pixel to red. Uh, because this single near pixel controls both turnouts at the same time. So then we go down and then we get to these bottom ones which are to do with the bottom right hand corner here. This on my layout is a turntable, very small, you know, just two exits. So when you select, if you click on this near pixel here, this one becomes bright green the opposite end becomes yellow and these two become red. This helps me to keep uh, track of which is what I call the number one end of the turntable bridge. So if I then click on here obviously that's going to go bright green, that's going to go yellow and the turntable is going to turn round. But it's one of those things that you know when you're looking at that turntable without this sort of light system you start to lose track of which way round is the turntable and instead of moving a loco from here to here I move it from here and it goes all the way round to here. So that is why it has the color system as it is and that's why some of these um, cases have 11 items. Now on top of that obviously all I have to do as well um, is here it sends the near pixel the ESP now command to the auxiliary controller so basically it sends two bits of information 
and those two bits of information are the um, accessory number and the direction. Now for my turntables it only uses an accessory number for each position. It's zero for all of them. Um, that's just the way I wrote it and that's the way it interprets it actually on the layout because obviously I built the decoder on there myself from an Arduino. So there is a very simple function here that sends the ESP now command. It takes a variable for my address and my command, which is the direction, sticks it into the uh, the data and transmits it. Off it goes. And then when data is sent, um, it serial prints some information to the um, serial monitor and it just lets me know did it arrive successfully or did it fail and that's basically how the script works it's a very very short and simple script the great thing for me is obviously i can program this to each module board on my layout and uh, it just means i can just add more and more of these now i've got a standard setup basically all i have to do each time is change the track diagram and the near pixels on the backboard. Obviously, even on this one, if I wanted to add another near pixel, all I've got to do is uh, take this thing apart, put a little bit of extra tape in, and just stick another near pixel in. It's a very, very flexible system, and it works really well. So, uh, I think the next bit is just to show you it in action. So here we are with the um, systems all ready to go. Uh, I'm not sure you know, if, if you're familiar with the fact that you can run two separate Arduinos or ESP32s at the same time using the Arduino IDE. Uh, what you do is you open up the IDE and load your first, uh, attach your first Arduino. So that one on this one is on COM20. Then you open up the IDE again, not the normal way where you'd open uh, a sketch. You literally start the IDE again and you so basically you have another instance of the program running and then you load your other sketch. So in the right hand sketch here is my auxiliary controller that is passing information on to DCC++ and here we have the main controller. So I'm just going to quickly uh, restart this thing. There we go, all done. So when it starts, load of information comes through. Um, it's found my I2C address at 5D, thankfully. The touch screen is initialized and it gives me the MAC address of this particular board. Now, what I'm going to do now is touch one of the near pixels. So you can see that I have sent, um, that is the touch location. Item 1 was touched and it has sent the data uh, and it's been successfully received. So it sent 8 bytes of data and what it did was it sent address 11, direction 0. Now that means it's got accessory 11, direction 0, which translated into uh, the board address and the way uh, DCC accessories work. That is the actual correct code that gets sent. So if I change direction, you'll see instead of the 0 on the end, it's sent to 1. You might think, well, hang on, it's accessory 11 and it's got this code. I'm not going to explain that right now, but it is correct. And so if you remember, I'd got that one near pixel that changes two turnouts at the same time. If I press that one, you will see that it sends the address for uh, 3, 1 and 3, 3, and it's turned both of them in a direction to the right. Uh, again, if I touch the turntable, I'll get a code here 420. So you can see I'm sending this data across, it's being received, and this is then the code that gets transmitted off to the DCC++ base station. And 
everything moves on the layout. That's basically how it works. So I hope this sort of mini tutorial has been useful to you. It's um, quite a bit to take in the first time round, but again, go to the Digital Town website. There is a whole write up on the thing, and I'll do some more on the auxiliary controller when I get time. Anyway, if it has been useful for you, please click the like and subscribe button. Thanks again, and bye for now.